Our guy Lou Maloney is with us on the Harbor One Hotline. Uh, He's doing his best yeah. L.A. night now. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it's like the voice of the Red Sox. It's like the most silent voice. Like, like they, it, the team is silent. It works in the shadows. Uh, I'm still kind of down right now. I just need them to sign somebody. Yeah, I mean, you're down. Yeah. It seems like, um, I don't even know how to phrase this. What's that? I think, I feel like you're a little jealous. What do you mean? As, you know, per usual, you know, there's, according to you, there's this uh, odd double standard that exists with the perception of the Red According Sox me? And, uh, <laughs> and of the Red Sox and the Patriots. Well, I mean, listen, this has always been a hot topic for you. You know that. For and me. then and here we go again, yeah. right? Hey, yeah. the Patriots don't spend, and yet it's almost like they get a pass, yet the Red Sox yes. uh somehow uh you know don't. Well, you've always yeah, you know how he's always had to touch the nerve, right? And and I will I'll start it with this. The Red Sox are being cheap. There's no excuse for them not spending. High ticket prices, the market, they're acting like a small market team. They should 100% spend to that it's a tax, and they should go over the tax. There's no excuse. It's not letting them off the hook. The Patriots are the exact same way. The Patriots actually have the same problems that everybody bitches about with the Red Sox. And sorry, Robert Kraft, it's not perception. It's fact. You don't spend. You were 31st in spending. You're 27th in spending. You were 29th in spending three or four years ago. You spent one year, and what that do? Got you embarrassed in the first round. Your management is all screwed up. You can't judge talent. You've let great talent leave that building for nothing. Brady, Gronk, you name it. What do you want to go? Shaq, I mean, Shaq Mason, what do you want to go? I mean, you can go up and down this roster. They don't have an offensive line, just like you don't have a rotation. I know it's just, you know, offensive line is important. You don't spend money at all on your soccer team. The poll that the poll that the poll that went out about oh, your like about your weight room, your training facility, one of the worst in the league. That's like, not true. It is true. The poll. The oh, I remember that it. poll, but it's like their their weight room is fine. The players said it. It wasn't like fans. Uh, what else do they need? I'm just saying it's very very similar. Yet Robert Kraft still continues to get the pass in this town. He's like untouchable. That's all. Well, I you know, I've say, always been on that rant. Yeah, I would say there are two reasons why. Number what? one. The owner comes across down in Foxborough as a human being. 100%. Not a robot who freezes whenever someone boos or heckles him. And number Shoot two, it. yeah, I know the philosophy is to be cheap in, in Foxborough because they did get good players to take less. What is the philosophy over at Fenway for 20 years? That's my problem is I could manufacture some outrage like you, Lou, but the problem is for 20 years – They've taken me on a ride of up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And that is more maddening than having somebody who's cheap but wins. Well, I've never said it was a perfect analogy. <laughs> but they are oh, one of the Christian cheaper organizations. Christian set this up as if this was you with your torch <laughs> oh. running through. No, no, no. It no, feels no. like it. It's, it's, it it's not a like perfect analogy. Yeah. And, I, and I understand it. Once again, it's not letting the Red Sox off the hook. You know, the Red no. Sox were fifth and sixth in spending, went to an ALCS in 2021. I mean, I know it's not one, two, or three. Mm -hmm. Dropped out of the top 10 for one year. And they get shredded. I mean, Kraft has consistently been in the bottom five, you know, and everybody points to, like, ticket prices. I know the Red Sox have high ticket prices. I mean, I know it. They're third in baseball behind the Giants. I mean, the Yankees and the Dodgers. Do you guys know where the Patriots' ticket prices are? Well, they're pretty high. Third in yeah. the NFL. And they are the 31st in cash spending. But you never hear that. I bet you a lot of people don't even realize yeah, that. Because, so, they have a, because they have a buffer, and the buffer is Bill Belichick as opposed to I mean, Sam Kennedy. No, no, no. Again, not a perfect analogy. I get it, but what is is Bill that much better with the media than Sam? I no, but very no, but, in a lot of ways. No, but you know where I, where Bill and this is in part on Tom too. Where Bill maybe wins the day is he got Brady to take less. Yo, but and here's the thing. And there's it's, no it's, one who's been able this, to get like guys Rush, like Mookie to take less. I, I, I get it. I get it. It's not. I'm not comparing. I'm not saying the Red Sox aren't bad. Oh. All I'm saying is that the Patriots are as well. And don't get any heat for it. Like, oh, they are as just well. Give it, give it two years for what uh, we're about to go through. Well, it's been, ah. a four year, it's been a four-year rebuild, yet four-year rebuilds aren't, aren't acceptable at Fenway. <laughs> Apparently, they are at Patriot Place <laughs> with a team with no quarterback, tight end, uh, wide receiver, line, or coaching uh, staff. <laughs> but well, they're filling up that coaching staff. It's, um, the point is this. Yeah. They're very, very similar that for some people, people don't want to recognize it. I get it. Pound on the Red Sox. They deserve it right now for everything they're going through. They should not be doing this. They should be spending money right now. 
The point is, is that you got a team down in Foxborough that is very, very similar and probably further off from winning, and they get nothing. They get disappointment. They get some comments here and there, but it sure, certainly isn't the emotion that Fenway does. Uh, Lou's weekly visit with us is sponsored by McFarland Energy, the heating, cooling, and bioheat delivery pros that Eastern Mass and all of Cape Cod depend on at McFarlandEnergy.com, by the E.L. Harvey companies, including NASA Disposal and Mega Disposal, your local trash collecting and recycling providers, and by Eviva Trattoria, Italian-inspired locally, made from fresh, whole, locally sourced ingredients. That's a lot of sponsors. It is, Lou. You're, You're unbelievable, important. man. I mean, Everybody really wants is. to be a part of the Lou Merloni deal. I mean, Big, I like it. <laughs> yeah, that is, uh, that's pretty good. Here's the one thing that is kind of starting to grate on me a little bit about it the Red Sox. Is. Yeah. No, you me, know what it is, Lou? Too. <laughs> it's the, I, I get it. Don't talk to me like I'm an out-of-towner about Fenway Park. I get it that it's an experience. Yeah. I get it that people want to go there. I know they pumped up the whole, well, people come in from Japan to go there. That's great. I'm not one of those people that walks around like a tourist. I've been there. I've done that. I love Fenway Park when I can find a seat that actually fits me. But does the organization have to continue to pound us over the head about the Fenway Park experience when a lot of us around here who are going to be part of the 2.5 yeah. million that go there have already seen the damn place? Yeah, no, and, and I think we've hit this in the past, too. It's like, you know, the whole experience, I, I don't really care. The experience for me is winning ball games, and I think that's most Red Sox fans. Like, it's nice that people from all over the world want to come and see Fenway Park, but I want that place with Red Sox fans, and I want them there because the team is winning, because their stars are on the field, the people that they're following. I think that's, you know, Cora wants the same thing. He's mentioned it before, wants that to be a tough place to play. You know, I can remember going, like, even like in Cleveland with Eric Wedge talking about those some of those teams, 07, when they walked into Fenway Park. That very young team was rattled. They didn't know what to do. Fenway Park was nuts. It's insane. And it's been a friendly environment, like friendly Fenway by a different definition. It's friendly for everybody, including the visiting team. So it's their job to put a competitive team out there, especially one that's going to be covered by Netflix. Like, what a year. Like, that's what I don't... I don't oh. You know, it's like you knew it was coming for a while. It wasn't decided, and it's just it seemed like, you know, if you're Netflix, you're like, maybe the Dodgers, the Braves, we want to continue to do this for years, and, and instead it's it's Boston, and I just I still feel like they are a Montgomery and like a an, an Soler or something like that from actually being in this playoff race. I just don't I, – I, the whole thing's very confusing. To me. And, and back to just the Montgomery piece of this. So I just – I feel like he's just there – he still hasn't been signed. You know, yeah. uh, spring training is, it's like, is this just one big, just little standoff here between these two sides? Why yeah, don't I, they... I don't, I don't know if it's a standoff. Like, I don't know if the Red Sox are like, you know, we're going to keep waiting them out, waiting them out and get them at our price. I think it's more like, you know, walk away power. Like, they're willing to walk away. They're like, if it's not at their price, we'll walk away. I don't agree with it. I think they should kind of dive in and take advantage of what is going on right now in baseball. Like, it's, like, to me, again, it, it's J.D. Martinez, that contract, you know, a two-year guarantee with options. You want to get out of here after two years? Fine. He stayed for five, you know, but it's just like a missing piece. Could he fall into their lap? I guess. I mean, he's too perfect of a fit, and everybody in baseball feels the same way for me to sort of be like, give up on that idea. So we'll see. We'll see what happens in the next week. Uh, Lou, I hate to bring this up because yeah. I feel like you were maybe ahead of the game with us. I think it was two weeks ago when I do believe you uttered something to the effect of what the hell is Kenley Jansen even on this team for if yeah. they're going to be constructed the way they are. And sure enough, now some two weeks later, whether it's out of L.A., Philadelphia, you know, uh, MLB radio, people are now talking about the Red Sox listening on Kenley Jansen. What do you think? Yeah, I, I still feel like it's going to happen. Um, again, this was a guy that was very vocal last year that said, I came here to win. And it seems like this team, as of right now, has taken that step back, not forward. And if he's going to have that attitude about his team last year, like he, I could just see him sitting in his locker kind of looking at the media going, what am I still doing here? You know, I mean, he's at the age of his career that obviously, you know, there's some numbers he can accumulate as far as saves go, but he wants to pitch in October. So... And I think it's a valuable asset that some teams will want. I know it's $16 million and and I think he's good. You know, I think he's good. But when you look at some of the numbers, it, was, you know, it wasn't the best year of his career. It was borderline one of the worst years of his career, even though he was good. At, he had some bad stints, right? But I just feel like other teams that are trying to win 
I'll be more interested in him. But this thought that you're going to get a starting pitcher for him, I mean, the teams that want him are trying to win. They're not going to give you anything. you got to include other stuff to maybe get a double-A, triple-A arm. This isn't going to be like, hey, we can go get you know a starting pitcher for Kenley Jansen. In the event Kenley Jansen is traded, who is your choice to close? <sighs> well, <laughs> If I got my dream and I got Jordan Montgomery in here, it would be Tanner Houck. And it would be Chris Martin. It would be a combination of those guys. I think Garrett Whitlock. I think those three guys would kind of be in there. And that's the thing with Montgomery. I can solidify a bullpen. I can free up money with Jansen. I can sign Montgomery. I still feel good in the back end. You know, I'm still under this precious CBT number that everybody apparently needs to be under for some reason. So, I mean, I think it would really help out in a lot of areas. So um, let's go back to. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Uh, why everybody's going to be under for some reason? <laughs> uh, Theo Epstein. It's been about yeah. a week now since uh, he was announced. Uh, it seems like his role has maybe been defined by a couple different reports. I'm just curious. Do you have any more intel on what you think is going to be what he's going to be doing? Has it changed from the last time we talked to you last week? It hasn't really changed much for how I feel um, about it. I do think that you know a lot of people close to him have always talked about him having visions of owning a baseball team, and maybe he's sitting around and he's sort of getting some experience now, waiting for this Nashville thing to break. That was something Dave Dombrowski was high on before he jumped to Philadelphia. Um, so whether it's a short-term three, four, five-year thing or a long-term thing because he does get more control here with the Boston Red Sox, um, I never felt like, you know, and I know Sam Kennedy's been talking and maybe clouding the waters a little bit, obviously, but um, he's not day-to-day, you know. He's not like there with waiver claims and things like that. He's there for the stuff you want him for, the big decisions, the direction of the club. In my mind, he's a closer, you know, and it, maybe it's not this year, it's in the future. Hey, we need this guy. All right, Theo, why don't you come with me to John? You can convince him to spend. Or why don't you jump in this room with this agent? Why don't you help me on this phone call with this trade? Like those sort of things. He, he's a closer. And I think he, he he desperately wants this team to succeed. Everywhere he has gone, he's turned things around. He's 50 years old. He hasn't lost that desire to compete. And he's come here to change this thing. He's not going to put himself together with a team that loses. So he wants to turn this thing around. If that's three, four, five years, so be it. Hopefully it's longer than that. Uh, Lou, what do you make of the Netflix series and how much are they going to have to use you to create content? I don't get it. I, I really don't. This, you know, um, it's not a HBO hard knocks. Hey, check it out every Sunday to recap the week. It's going to come out in 2025. So the idea of getting to know your players, we won't get to know them until next year, until we watch it. You know, you know, That's true. In, in, you know, in, in, in covering this team, like I was thinking about, I'm like, oh, Cora could be a big winner, right? Obviously, he's going to come off well in this thing. People are going to like him, and he's going to make a lot of money in the offseason somewhere else. But it ain't going to come out till 2025. He'll already probably be somewhere else. You know, and, and I just think about where this year could be. Like, but you put a documentary. I don't want to watch 2020 all over again. Like, I want to forget about that season. Like, this year, like, if, if it's a playoff year, I get it. But I don't know, if they don't make the playoffs, like, 12 months from now, I'm going to sit down and want to watch it? Yeah, I don't say why not Why not turn it around like they would behind the B or, yeah. or hard knocks. That would make where more sense. You, yeah, I mean, because if, if, the, if the idea is to kind of showcase the Fenway experience, you're doing it in the winter when nobody is even giving a crap, they're probably going to be talking about a bowl game play yeah. being played Listen, or, a, or a hockey game. Yeah, I, I think it's obviously moving forward, right? Like, you know, the Red Sox are the first team to do it. There's, there's something there. Uh, I get it. Get to know the players. Get to know the grind. Uh, I, I think it, for me it would be very, very interesting. It's just that I got to wait a year for it. Like you said, if I had like one week at a time or one month at a time during the season, go back and look at what went on during that month behind the scenes – uh, I got to know the players as the season was going on. You know, like it just it it would make more sense. I'm sure they'll do a good job with it. Like Netflix would. Um, I just I just don't know. It's it's, it's just weird that you, you wait a year for it, and this is the year you're doing it. It's just it's a little different. What I want to know is, does Nesson get that free programming? I mean, as a, they're the kings of that over there. Will Netflix give it to them so they can put it on and you know? Uh, run it on a loop on Christmas or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Slide we'll, that over there. Ask, ask, the, ask the higher ups, but um, oh, yeah, you'll have to do that. <laughs> yeah, 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 you can, you can, uh, you can ask for us and uh, and find out. Uh, all right, uh, Super Bowl lean yeah. and uh, any bets you like for Sunday, Lou? Uh, I still to this, uh, I am not going against Mahomes. I'm just not. <laughs> I've sat here many, many times, like we said two weeks ago when I. 
had them, as a matter of fact, like alternate line giving points to the Ravens, and it was like the same conversation. It was just, like, you know, questioning um, what Lamar Jackson can be and who Patrick Mahomes is. I'm not going against him. San Fran's got a better team. I've seen that before. I've caught that act before where everyone sat there and said, this team's better. Even though they got Brady, it doesn't matter, and it doesn't matter. I think Pat Mahomes wins the Super Bowl. You know, we're going to have to hunker down before baseball season and tap into uh, tap into some of your knowledge to figure out our uh, MLB futures. Oh, boy. Yeah. I mean, you look around the league because there's always some hidden gems, you know, like those like 75 win teams. You're like, no, no, no. That's a good team. You know, that's a pretty good team. They're going to win, you know, over 80. So there's, there's some good gems. Yeah. And figuring out like who's going to win the American League is where the value might be because the yep. Dodgers are going to be such a heavy favorite in terms of winning the World Series. But yep. We got time for that. We got time. Uh, hey, when do you uh, when do you uh, hop on the back of the uh, of the truck to uh, head to Florida? There'll be no truck in my plans, but there will be a plane, and that'll be about February nineteenth or so for about ten days. Ooh. And then come back for a little bit and go are back. You, are you going to room with Bradford? Bradford? Yeah. No. Didn't, didn't he like get a house one time and you guys no. always had to stay with well, him? I think I'm going to crash there one night oh, okay. with him and Doug, you know. And oh, as much okay. as I enjoyed, I'll probably get together with them, maybe go over there for okay. an evening. But, right. you know. Twin Peaks. Here we you come again. my own thing. Twin Peaks. <laughs> that's, the real, that's the real Netflix series right there is all that spring training. Lou, thank you, man. We appreciate you. All right, boys. Have a great weekend. There we all go. Right, Our guy Lou Merlone.